I've been seeing these ceramic vases that are shaped like grocery bags for about $150. So I figured I would take my favorite brand paper grocery bag and create a ceramic one. Um, here's my bag and this is how I did it. The first thing I did was I took a um, newspaper and I wrapped it around a box and I taped it together so that the box could slide easily in and out of it. The next thing I did was I rolled some slabs um, I don't recommend rolling them on newspaper, but you should roll them on canvas or some sort of paper, not directly on the table, because the clay will stick to the table. I had a little bit of an issue with pieces of newspaper sticking to the clay, um, but here I am measuring the, the pieces of clay by using the sides of the wrapped box. And um, I'll show you a, a little bit of a closer look at the wrapped box in a minute. Anyway, here I am rolling out um, all the sides of the uh, of the box. You can see how I wrapped the box in newspaper, um, but I'm, now I'm doing the the narrower sides. And once I have all the sides cut, I'm going to start assembling it. Um, if you're familiar with ceramics, you know you can't mush two pieces of ceramics together. It won't work. It'll fall apart. So what you do is I took a fork and I used some slip, which is just clay plus water. I put it on the fork and I scratched both sides and what that does is when you push them together they'll lock into each other um, kind of like velcro or like two puzzle pieces they'll just lock right into each other um, in this case I'm reinforcing it by taking a coil and scratching the side of the coil and scratching the two edges of the the two slabs and then joining it together anything that's scratched and you slip on will um, meld together very nicely but if you just mush the clay together without doing that it will fall apart as soon as the clay dries so I'm very religious about scratching everything I add on so I'm scratching even the coil and the two slabs you do that for all four sides just keep flipping it over if the box starts to collapse you can stuff the box temporarily with newspaper and you just build the entire thing around your newspaper covered box I will say it is essential that the box, the cardboard box itself, is able to slide in and out of the newspaper. You do not want to attach the newspaper to the box. It has to be wrapped around it. And then lift up the box to slide it in and out just to make sure that it works. So I'm just attaching all the sides. And now I'm going to do the bottom. So I'm doing my last slab of clay, rolling it out. And you can see the whole thing stays together pretty well. There's my last corner, and then I have to do the bottom. And even if it starts to look like it's sagging a little bit, it'll look even more realistic as a paper bag. I saw one of these at the Museum of Modern Art, and it was about $150, and that's when I decided I was going to do this demo. It was so easy to create. So now I'm doing the bottom. And what I did was I scratched and scored the bottom and I put it on the slab, trimmed the slab, and then I took it off and wherever it was damp around the edges, that's where I scratched. And then I put it back on. And now I'm joining it, smoothing it on. And then it'll be time to create the handles. And once I have my basic design, I'm sort of shaping it, getting it to look exactly how I like, peeling off any bits of newspaper that are stuck to it, and I'm creasing it, and now I take the box out. But I leave the newspaper in. The newspaper stays in until the entire sculpture is dry, and then it can just be pulled out. The important part about this is that you do need to remove the box while the clay is still wet. As the clay dries, it will shrink, and if the box is still in place, it will crack where the box is rigid and doesn't allow it to shrink. 
but the newspaper is soft and will crinkle. So as the clay dries, it shrinks and the newspaper merely crinkles in. So you have this wonderful box drying with lots and lots of support. Now I'm adding the handles on, I'm looking at them to make sure they look nice, and then of course scratching and slipping both the handles and the box so that the two scratched sides lock into one another. And that's pretty much my finished box. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. And this is Rachel Winnenberg, the helpful art teacher, with another art tutorial. Um, next week I will be painting the, uh, the box with glaze and decorating it. But here it is, drying.